Welcome to iLecture Online and here's another example of how to work with problems dealing with electromagnetic radiation and in this case we're going to look at the momentum of light and yes light has momentum even though it doesn't have any mass so the problem here reads we have a 500 kilogram satellite which is being propelled by sunlight using two 100 square meter solar sails starting from rest how long would it take to reach a speed of one meter per second. Now, even though one meter per second is very fast, just think about it this way, the fuel is cheap. It's absolutely free. We're going to use sunlight. So here we have the two sails and the spaceship have a mass of 500 kilograms. Each sail has an area of 100 square meters and the intensity of the sunlight coming in is 1361 watts per square meter, which is about the intensity of sunlight when it reaches the Earth. So we're going to need the equation for momentum and we know that the, uh, the dp dt, or I should say the dp dv, the change of momentum per unit volume, is equal to, uh, let's say, 1 over mu sub naught times e times b times 1 over c squared. And you should recognize this portion right here as being the intensity of the light, so this can be written as the intensity of the light, also known as the magnitude of the pointing vector, times 1 over c squared. If we now want to find the, the <coughs> momentum contained within a certain amount of, of uh, sunlight, we can write it as the dp is equal to the intensity times 1 over c squared times dv. And so now we have to just imagine a certain amount of volume of, of sunlight. And so if we imagine that sunlight came from a, a long ways off, from where the sun is, of course, and it's flying through space, or it's not really flying through space, it's moving through space, hitting these sails. And let's say that we take all the sunlight that, that will hit the sail in a one minute period. So let, uh, let the time equal one minute. So how much sunlight will be hitting the sail? What would be the volume of the sunlight hitting the, hitting the sail uh, if we take the sunlight that would be hitting it in a period of one minute? Well, let's think of it this way. So here, imagine that this is the volume of the, um, the, volume of the sunlight. And I'm having a little bit, little bit of trouble drawing this, so let me uh, think about it. Let me just go like this. So here's the volume of the sunlight. Um, there, that's a little bit better. There we go. And um, let's say that the length here, the length is equal to the, this, the velocity times the time. And then this is the cross-sectional area A. And of course, the cross-sectional area would have to be the same as the surface area of the sails. That would be 100 square meters. And the length would be the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And for a time of 1 minute, which would be 60 seconds. And that would then be the dv. So in this case, the dv would equal the length times the cross-sectional area. And the length being divided, being decided by calculating it by multiplying the c times the time. And of course, we have the cross-sectional area. All right. So that will give us the dp. Now, we also have to think of it this way. Then in classical mechanics, we could say that the change in momentum, the dp, is equal to m times dv. So knowing the mass of the satellite, we can figure out the change in the velocity if we know how much momentum we're imparting upon it. And then to give it a little bit extra push, instead of just having the light hit the sails and stop at the sails, if we take the sails and give it a silvery surface so that the light will actually reflect back, then we accomplish twice the change in momentum. So that means we have to take this whole thing and multiply it times 2. So this now will equal the mdv. So twice, and the reason why we say twice is because then we're also going to let the light reflect. So we have double the change in momentum. i times 1 over c squared times dv will then equal the m times the dv here, which is what we're looking for. And so Turning the equation around, dividing both sides by m, I can say that the change in velocity, therefore, is going to be equal to 2i times dv divided by m times c squared. All right, let's plug in everything that we know now. So we have, um, this is 2 times the intensity. dv will be equal to the speed of light times the uh, time. And, um, oh, let me, let me instead of doing that, 
So dV is going to simply be the length of time that would be, yeah, speed of light times the time, that's L, times the area, A, divided by mc squared. Then we notice that this C will cancel out this C, and now we're ready to plug in some numbers. Okay, so this is equal to 2 times the intensity of 1361 watts per square meter. Uh, we have the time, which would be 60 seconds. And um, the area, that would be twice 100 square meters, because we have two sails. And take the whole thing and divide it by the mass, which is uh, 500 kilograms. And the speed of light, which is uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, so that will give us the change in the velocity of, due to the sunlight reflecting off of the solar sails for a period of one minute. All right, so let's see how fast that spaceship will be moving. So 2 times 1361 times 60 times 2 times 100, and we divide that by 500 and divide it by 3 e to the 8, and it's not very much. But it's something, the dV is equal to 2.18 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second. So after one minute, the spaceship will be moving at the very high velocity of 2.18 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second. Well, not really, that's just kidding. But let's say now, how much longer will it take then for the spaceship to reach a speed of one meter per second? So if we now take the inverse of that, then we know how many minutes it will take to get up to that speed. So time is equal to one over the change in velocity. So actually what I'm going to do here is going to be equal to one meter per second divided by the dp, the dv I should say, the change in velocity. So one meter per second divided by uh, 2.18 times 10 to the minus 4 meters per second. So simply taking the inverse of that, so take the inverse, and it says it will do that in 4,592 minutes. So that's equal to, um, yeah, that would be equal to, uh, actually this is not meter per second, this would be meters per minute. The dV is not meters per second. Well, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. It's meters per second, but it does that. I'm messing up here. Sorry about that. But I also realized what I'm doing here. So this is going to be in minutes because the change in velocity is accomplished by one minute of sunlight. So whatever time I get, at, get here is going to be the time in minutes. That's what I'm doing. And so it's going to be 4,592 minutes. Well, if we divide that by 60, that gives us 76 and a half hours. And if we divide that by 24, 3.2 days. So, if you want to design a spaceship and get it propelled by solar sails, and you make the solar sails 100 square meters each, and you make them such that the light will reflect off of them instead of simply be absorbed, so you get twice the momentum push, so to speak, from the sunlight, then the spaceship will reach a speed of 1 meter per second after 3.2 days. And after 6.4 days, it'll be 2 meters per second. And after 32 days, it'll be 10 meters per second. And given enough time, eventually that spaceship will get quite a velocity. Um, just have to be patient. And that's how you deal with the momentum of flight.